Good afternoon, it's Patriot Smoothie. We're on lunch break here at court in Ottawa on day 21 of the trial of Tamara Leach and Chris Barber. Had another matter to attend to this morning, so I wasn't able to provide court coverage. But it's funny, it's like court doesn't move if I'm not here because all morning it was nothing but delay, delay, the delay. I reported that the defense requested the delays, but actually it was the Crown. Crown rose first thing this morning in court to request a delay, and then that delay was extended. Originally it was a 10-minute delay, then a 30-minute delay, came back briefly, and then adjourned till 12. I got here around noon, sat in there when they came back at 12, and then the court basically said we're on lunch till 2 o'clock after. The Crown asks for that because the Crown said they are in communication with Ottawa Police Service's legal department waiting to get what they need to get that material to their friends, to the defense team, so they can review it. Magus rose to say she hasn't reviewed anything, so can't comment on how long it's going to take to review it. I asked Magus in the hallway, is this stemming from the issues test, uh, in, raised in Cross yesterday, or sorry, during Chief, and then explored further during Cross? And she said yes, in regards to the work phone that Officer uh, Bach had deleted. She, she, she testified that she had an update that she had delayed doing throughout the, the convoy protest. And she did that update sometime after the convoy protest. And she had received a printout from uh, Ottawa Police Service's IT department, basically a list of instructions on what she needs to do to transpose um, data on her phone to a backup. She, was, she tried to do it, she testified, but she was not able to, and it was unsuccessful, so the data was lost. And now on that work phone, she testified that there was uh, text messages with Chris Barber. Now those were recovered via Chris's phone, I believe, when the police analyzed his phone. Uh, but there's other things on there, text messages potentially to other convoy leaders, to other convoy, convoy people that may not have been properly disclosed to the defense that could change the entire trajectory and truth of this case, as well as potential emails, all the material on her work phone gone. She was asked in cross-examination by Ms. Magus, by counsel for uh, Chris Barber, what steps did she take to preserve that evidence as she is required to do when they're char when the police charge someone, they have to preserve that evidence for court. And she said, well, I, I got the IT handout, I followed the steps, didn't work, updated the phone and lost everything. So that's what happened. There was also another thing that was raised, her personal phone. So she had a work phone for the police and a personal phone. On her personal phone, she had those police signal chats where all the PLT team was talking to each other. Now, Magus and her went over in cross-examination briefly at the end of yesterday because we just barely finished Crown Chief, so we got to a little bit of cross with Miss Magus, uh, with Officer Bach, and Magus asked her, well, you know, you had these signal chats on your personal device, you, you reviewed these materials in preparation for the trial, yes, in early September, a couple days ago, whatever, what have you, and so Magus asked, well, did you not notice the discrepancies between your raw signal chats and the PLT log? And she basically said, "Our PLT." she had a misunderstanding of what the PLT log is. To her, it's an exact copy of the signal log. But in court, we, we've been referring to the PLT log as that compilation of the, of the signal chats and other things that were piecemeal together, not the source stuff. Then she was asked by Magus, well, what steps did you take to disclose the signal chat on your phone once you realized the discrepancy or in general? And she said, well, I didn't disclose the signal chat on my phone because I believe the person in that chat responsible for disclosure had done it for everyone including myself on my behalf. So disclosure issue with the personal phone, the signal device, which the signal in, in fairness to what I understand they do have the defense at this point all the signal but you know that there was a trouble from early on in this uh, trial going back to early September when officer PL, Ottawa Police Services PLT officer Isabel Sear originally testified that testimony was delayed. I believe she testified September 6th it was delayed because they had the piecemeal PLT logs but they did not have the signal chat. Then once they got the signal chat slowly throughout the course of this trial you could follow previous videos to see how that timeline progressed. There was problems with disclosing all the emails that were attachments in the signal chats. Then there was confusion about the Crown considering some of that irrelevant, so withholding it, they've now gotten it. So everything of that, I believe, has been disclosed. But disclosure issues concerning this wiped phone, uh, this wiped cell phone, uh, we could call it a wiped cell phone, that was all the data lost somehow, some time after convoy when it, Officer uh, Bach, Nicole Bach, did this update to her phone didn't properly back it up and now that material is gone. So Crown in communication with Ottawa Police as we speak, trying to get this material somehow uh, for the defense and I pre imagine this is going to be a significant issue going forward. We just don't know what could have been on her phone. It could have been important communications with other protesters that could have totally changed the way the evidence is being interpreted in this case could, could change the facts of this case. There could be high, we just don't know what's on there and there's no way of knowing. She had an obligation as a police officer to preserve that in this criminal, uh, for these criminal proceedings. She also testified interestingly yesterday, and I don't think I mentioned that, she was asked by Ms. Magus on cross, Officer Bach was asked, 
did she take any steps to preserve, to, to um, was she aware, sorry, on February 17th that Chris Barber was arrested? She said not immediately. So somehow the primary PLT officer primarily in contact with Chris Barber was not aware of his arrest until several, some time later. That's something she testified. She also testified that uh, uh, she had a text conversation with Chris Barber. And I did mention this yesterday. Uh, Chris Barber basically uh, was, they were talking about how on February 14th they had moved the 40 trucks, 100 something personal vehicles, I believe it was total. Uh, Chris Barber was explaining that on the 14th they had delays because it's complicated to move uh, large vehicles in tight areas that he had delays with the logistics of the whole thing, delays because the, they were waiting that day for the police to actually approve their starting to move the trucks around. So that's interesting to consider. We also heard other evidence. We also heard from her about how that day they had a conversation, the 15th again, where she informed Chris Barber that no, they couldn't move trucks anymore. It was just a one day thing that she's been told. We've, been, we've heard throughout this trial that at some point in time, the OPS, someone high in the chain of command, passed the message down, including to, it came from above Russell Lucas, Inspector Russell Lucas of the Ottawa Police, we know that well, because he also testified he was told after that one day, no more moving trucks. All the PLT were told. The PLT were told that early on in the protests, if you recall, as early, I believe, as January 31st, not one inch, whatever it was, wherever it came from, somewhere on high, came from down there, uh, from up there to downwards. And they were told, you know, they were negotiating basically uh, with, uh, what do you call it, with, with, with no possible outcome of actually exercising the negotiations. They actually did negotiate with people, for example, at the corner of Rideau, Sussex, four trucks who wanted to move. They were told, nope, can't move them. So they were trying to move people around, these PLT officers, to reduce the footprint in meaning that moving trucks away from the residential areas, they had achieved negotiated success with some people who were willing to work with them, but were told by upper high on high that no, you can't do that. And PLT was aware of that order going back to the end of January, or early February, but continued to negotiate as if they could do something. Uh, we don't know what they told trucks, uh, truckers in full, if they disclosed to them that, hey, we, we're, t we're talking about this, but we can't actually do it once we agree to the terms. Don't know about that, but they were still trying to do their job to negotiate, to lower the footprint. And as we know, that means move trucks and vehicles out of residential areas. They all wanted to be on Wellington. We know that. They all wanted to be on Wellington. There was a lot of them. There was some poor planning. The police told them how to come into the city, where to park, except, of course, there were some issues with the police uh, routing and maps for parking and staging areas at the Rideau intersection. Greenspan making a point to say that people could have gravitated north to bywards from that and south to Sandy Hill because of that. So these are the arguments we're hearing in court developing. And one more interesting thing, Officer Isabel Sear, who's that PLT officer from the beginning of the month, who also testified just before Officer Nicole Bla uh, Bach, I don't remember which day of the week, she testified that she too lost her text messages from the end of January to, I believe, around February 9th. But in her case, she said that she was able to print some out, but she testified that she did lose some of them. So all kinds of disclosure issues. We can't call it anything else but major disclosure issues and just procedural issues. You would think that police would take more steps to preserve their evidence. From Ottawa, lunch update on Patriot Smoothie, day 21.